YouTube.com slash Tim Westwood TV. I came out here, I think the when I first came out, I came out here in like 2000. Two, 2003 the, Is first that the first time? time I think the first time I was ever here um, I, 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 yeah I was like unsigned hype in the source I really didn't have nobody that knew who I was and I just was calling radio shows randomly um, and you know shout out to 279 he, he was yeah, the man. first one that ever exactly. put me on he used to pay attention man pick right. him up man so he, he, I, always, I always show love for motherfuckers. He was the yeah, first nigga. Right. I called him on the phone, I remember. Imagine getting a phone call from like a young 22-year-old kid. Yo, man, I'll come fuck that station up. And he was like, yo, man, who are you? And I was like, look, dude, just give me five minutes. I'll come in there. I'll bar this, this shit to death. And he was like, cool, all right, going to come in. So I did my thing. And then uh, I did the show in, in Norwich. And then I started coming back again. And I saw the way that these fans out here, they reminded me more of like 1990s. New York fans, you know, they weren't afraid to boo shit, you know, in New York now, people don't like something, like, uh, they give you that, that obligatory clap, but here in London, I saw them boo people off stage they didn't like, or someone that fucked up lyrics to a song, and it just reminded me of how New York used to be in the 90s, where they were just merciless, but that caused people to have to refine the craft, it was like, if I get up there with some mediocre bars, they're gonna rip me apart, and that's what I always liked about this city. And in a lot of ways, like real hip hop and true school, you know what I mean? They're not like like almost old school in a lot of ways. Right, but I think in that sense, what I saw was like, for example, Bam and, and the rest of them told us, you know, it's it's called a universal nation of. Of, of the universal Zulu nation because we're talking about universality. We're talking about a world where it's humanity above the idea of race. You know what I mean? Humanity above the idea of religion. That hip hop has no race. It has no religion. It's supposed to be a mechanism for people to either entertain with education or entertain with, in, in some level, some sort of entertainment. With, not just use a word to define a word, but with distraction. The way they brought it up to me was to say, look, back in the day on a plantation, there were slaves that sang the song about swing low, sweet chariot. They weren't happy to be there, but they sang songs to distract themselves because who wants to be here about chaos and misery all day? On the other hand, there were the griot slaves, though that those that said, you know what, we're going to use coded language in some of these songs and we're going to get the hell out of here. And I thought that, you know, the way it was shown to me was that hip-hop in its strongest form had a balance of these two things but of course when a corporation comes in they say okay we like this one where we get people to dance and spend money but we don't like this one where it forces people to think where it forces people to say hey you know this is universal it doesn't matter what your color is it doesn't matter when you were born do you dedicate yourself to the art are you putting new people on do you have niggas that people from the mainstream would rather not see on your fucking show mm -hmm. good that's hip-hop so, I mean, in that sense, I grew up with the purest format of what it would be. But they also told me the sad reality of our downfall, which is that New York was too prideful. You know what I mean? Now, the only East Coast cities that you name, people say the East Coast. They don't think of Atlanta. Atlanta's on the East Coast. They don't mm -hmm. think of Miami. Miami's an East Coast city, motherfucker. You know, they think of New York and Boston. That's it. Philly don't even require itself to be the East Coast now. You know, D.C., that's down south to them. North Carolina, even though if you listen to a lot of their underground acts, primarily very boom bapish, but yet they're considered down south so it's just a question of not taking advantage of those those relationships and building out to say oh man we got to include these people you know when the london posse first came to america people just knew a bunch of wild ass niggas from london was there they were like y'all niggas the london posse cool so we take that name and we run it with it and they got somewhere with that and they was they was people showed them love because of this shit and it was because they had that communal understanding of we just got to bring as many people together but when we lost that we lost, in, in a sense, our ability to reach out and to be a tastemaker. So that was, to me, when people say, oh, New York, come back. It's not a question of come back. The only way to come back is not to establish dominance. It's to establish the ability to include other people in what your vision is, you know? The South established their 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 power m marketing wise because they're inclusive. It doesn't matter if you're from Tennessee and I'm from Atlanta. Hey man, let's drop this record, mm -hmm. man, because we're both gonna make money. We're both gonna do the tour. I'm a rock in Tennessee with you. You're gonna come rock in Atlanta for me. That should have been the the game plan between New York and DC, but it turned into 
I'm hip hop, and unless you do what I say, you're not hip hop, which is bullshit. You know? Exactly, because in a lot of ways, New York cats really missed out on all, all what was happening in the South. We really missed out. I, I put it's this just... way: when I go down there, they treat me like they do here in London. But that's because I show love and because I know yeah. about the history of their old school acts, how they got to be where they were. You got to do the homework, man. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So big shout out to everybody who was doing it out here back in the day, London Posse, the the Demon Boys, all that, all that. Oh my! You really pay attention, <laughs> family. You really pay attention. I got a lot of love for the elders, and if I missed you, you know, big shout out to you because without y'all, there's no me. You know what I mean? So that's wow, it. you're paying attention to that UK baby. Now, what is uh, what are you doing out in the UK? You out here for a minute, spending time. What are you doing? Well, um, right now, I just started working with uh, my brother Southpaw, um, working on some uh, some of the new songs from this album I have called The Middle Passage, um, working on with Spread Love Entertainment on renting out a few venues for a full tour that we're going to have when we come back here. We sold out the Royal Festival Hall and the Electric Brixton, so we would like to expand and go to the next level. Um, also looking for theater here in London, which suits my needs because we had a successful uh, documentary drop called A Revolution of Immortal Technique, directed by my friend Carrie Stewart. And we had a lot of people that have been impactful in my life, not just in music, though, brother, but people that really enter your life and they talk sense to you, Tim. They don't want no money from you. They just want to speak to you and be your friend, like like a Chuck D was in the, in, in the DVD, a Woody Harrelson, KRS, uh, uh, Ice T. They say, oh, you know what, young man, Let me. this is the golden era, right? Mm. But we wasn't getting golden era money. We were getting pennies during this era. The golden era financially was has nothing to do with the golden era of hip hop m- lyrically or metaphorically so I mean from that experience it also includes my travels to North Africa to uh, to Afghanistan which I used a percentage of the uh, third world album the last real studio album I had before the mixtape to uh, to be able to fund so I mean this is an exemplar an example of that that journey that took me around the world so I want to find a theater that we can do that and do a Q&A you know I always tell people, if you're a gangster rapper, people want to find out how much of a gangster you are. You know, if you are, you talk about being a pimp, they see you with your mother, they think you got a special on old bitches because you a pimp, right? You a pimp. But if they, you think you're a revolutionary, then they want to test your knowledge. Mm-hmm. They want to test, oh, can, can you answer this question? Or what do you think about Syria? Or what do you think about uh, Britain's involvement in there, here or there? And I'm like, okay, cool. I'll field the questions and I'll give you honestly how I feel about them. And that's always been one of the great strengths that I have, the ability to interact with the fans. You know, you've been in this game long enough to realize the difference between a street dude and a diva, mm-hmm. right? A street dude is a real, you know what I mean? I'll talk to you. What you got to say to me? And a diva, I don't even want to discuss nothing with this nigga. I'm in the door, I'm on the mic, and I'm out the door. Because you will get got here in London. Don't think it's sweet. You will get got. There's evidence on YouTube of a lot of people getting got out here. I never had that problem because I get love from everywhere. I get love from London. I get love from Nigeria. I get love from Somalia. I get love from wherever, from from India, shout to the Sikhs, all that. So I'm out here. I'm looking for everything. I'm finishing the book. Um, I've just been writing a collection of short stories and a, a collection of philosophy. So full of, full on my plate, man. I'm here and I'm here to stay. I'm here to come back and I, I love to come back, do the show, whatever it be. You know, I'm open to it. I feel like this is a, a frontier of hip hop that too many people don't come in and, and, and do the proper amount of touring. In, you know, I, I didn't do just London. I went everywhere. You know, Spread Love was very uh, helpful in, in doing some of the other places. Leeds, Southampton, uh, Cardiff. Where the fuck else? I don't know. Manchester, Manchester, right? Them niggas, all that. Glasgow was there. Big shout out to all them. So I just want to hit as many places as possible. Mm. Now, obviously, there's a lot of depth to what you do. What is like the underlying, you know, principles of you know immortal technique? You know, what what are the things which guide you man what what are the things that like what is the message you're trying to get across because you, you you lyrically you're very deep deal with a lot of issues but what would you be the driving force if you had to define yourself right. like that i would say brother that i don't want people to believe everything i say i would rather them question everything that they're told and they would make me truly happy and my purpose would be complete in them doing that if they did, didn't accept and if i'm the first victim of that i don't mind Sure, don't accept what he says. Sure, exactly. Don't accept what I say. Challenge me on it. But don't just challenge me on that. You know, if you're going to talk about sexism or you're going to talk about something, then don't come at me. There's a long line of niggas you need to talk to before you get to me. But 
challenge it, you know, challenge the world that you see. You, you think something's wrong with your surrounding, challenge that, you know, don't be afraid to voice your opinion. Don't be afraid to speak up when you see something wrong. You know, there's no such thing as reverse racism. There's just racism. You know what I mean? We have male privilege, right? The two of us are unafraid to go throughout, to leave this door tonight. And we have no fear of being raped in the park. And not only that, but we don't have the fear that if we raped in a park afterwards, some prosecutor is going to try and get that guy off by saying that Tim and Felipe were too provocatively dressed. And that's the reason why we got what well, we, we really that's nonsense. But that's what happens. Also, I tell people that the world is built in the need for people to believe in fantastical truths. They, they need to believe in something absolutely preposterous to go on with their day because most of their lives are absolutely preposterous. So I just ask people to look deeper into everything and into themselves the most, you know. And before you change the world, change what's around you. If you don't like racism, believe me, it's because you grew up around that shit and confronted in your family and your neighborhood before you go anywhere else. Tell your parents, hey, man, you know what? That's really not the way the world is. It might be the way you experienced it, but it's not the way it is now. I don't hate on nobody for being who they are or where they're from. You know what I mean? I'm friends with Lord Jamar and Macklemore. So, I mean, I don't, I don't, I'm not mad at none of them. You know, I, they, they're more than welcome to have their opinions about anything. So, I mean, I guess, I guess with age comes, you know, me not being as judgmental and as willing to have those conversations. And I think it's also I've been humbled because being a person who was incarcerated, I realize, I guess, not long after I got out, but also, Tim, that that doesn't give me the privilege to brag about being in jail. It gives me the responsibility to educate these young brothers and sisters and say, that's not a rite of passage. That's just slavery. You're making money for somebody else. You know, the really smart criminals, they don't go to prison. They pay off the $2 million lawyer and they get the fuck out and they run for parliament again. That's what the real criminals do. So, I mean, I, that's the, the basic mainline message that I have, to be able to question and to be able to learn and to realize that this is a culture. You know, this is not just music. Hip hop is a culture. It's something that anybody can 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 be a part of. And the only thing to be a part of hip hop that you need is heart. It don't matter where your parents come from. It doesn't matter what your religion is. All you need is heart to be a part of this culture. That's it. You are immortal technique, baby. All day. London, I'm here. Harlem all day, baby. We out of here. Peace. YouTube.com slash Tim Westwood TV.